Hi, my name is Ali Shesova, and in this video, we are going to talk about operational transconductance amplifiers. We design compensators as part of our power supply control loop, and these are done typically, let's say, with a type 3 or a type 2 compensator. But what we study, and it's very common, is a, a standard voltage amplifier. This is a type of thing that you study at university. We are all very comfortable about designing a filter whereby the output here is a voltage. Now, Many chips come with this type of amplifier inside for uh, designing compensators for power supplies, but there are some which are called operational transconductance amplifiers. And it's actually very easy to design one with operational transconductance amplifier. I've put the two next to each other and I'm going to explain how this works. Effectively, the output of this amplifier is a current source instead of a voltage source and just because we don't practice with these during school we kind of a little bit are alien to it but it's actually very very simple output of this amplifier instead of being a voltage source is a current source now many textbooks and application notes draw two circles down there I have put the current source here so that uh, you can see how the current is going to flow. Whilst on a standard voltage amplifier, you have a voltage here, and as this voltage changes, these components compensate and give it a frequency response. On this one, if you imagine we have got a current that's gonna come out of there and it's gonna go down these components. If I had a pure resistor down here instead of this capacitor. Let us for simplicity say that this was a one ohm resistor and let us for simplicity say that when comparing this point, this is the output of your power supply with the reference, the output here was one amp. Remember this, the output of this is a current and not a voltage. Then one amp going down through one volt, uh, one ohm would create a one volt drop across a resistor. Right, assuming that this was a resistor. So this would be equivalent to a one volt over here. Now, if you look at the compensation components here, all we have to do in order to design a type two compensator with a transconductance amplifier is to take these components and break this point here and tie them to ground, assuming that this was a current source and that gives you an operational transconductance amplifier. So I have here a current source. If you look here, I have a capacitor, a resistor, in parallel with another capacitor. This is exactly the same. And what is happening is that the current source on the output of this amplifier is pushing current down there and there, and therefore the frequency response of these two is identical. Yeah. So, this was a type 2 compensator. The transfer function of this was one pole at origin, one zero, and another pole. And we knew from breach electric courses and various textbooks and so on that in order to calculate the components, the position of the poles and zeros were related to the component values with these equations. Please note that these are in radians. So what you would do is first, in order to stabilize your power supply, you would place your poles and zeros. You select, okay, my zero is going to be at 1.6 kilohertz. My pole, one of my poles is going to be at half the switching frequency and so on. And then you will solve these simultaneously and then you would get the component values and then you solve them onto the, on, onto the board and then hopefully things would work. Now, the same thing applies to the transconductance amplifier. We can see that the only difference between a type 2 of a standard voltage amplifier and a transconductance amplifier is the fact that you are now connecting these exact components to ground. The transfer function stays exactly the same. So you've got one polar error origin, you've got one zero, and then you've got another zero. And then you've got three equations which relate the poles and zeros that you place to the components. Now let's have a look at these. The equation for the zero is actually exactly the same. The equation for the second pole is also exactly the same. The only difference between the equations for calculating the component values between a transconductance amplifier and a standard amplifier is actually the polar origin. And you can see that within that, we have got a few extra terms. 
Here you've got 1 over R1, which is that one, C1, which is that one, and sorry, C3 and C1, these two. Here you have got GM, which is a function of the transconductors amplifier. We talk about this a little, a little bit later. RB, which is now this resistance here, right? R1, which is there, and again, C1 and C3 which is this one and that one. So you can see that in fact these two are almost identical in every aspect. The only difference is the way you calculate the component values for the polar origin. GM is specified in the data sheet and after you have placed your poles and zeros, which will be exactly the same for both, you solve these equations simu simultaneously and you get your component values. And of course in Breacher WDS, which is the software that we use in our workshop, we have added this feature and now you can select the transconductance amplifier and the software will not only place the poles and zeros for you but also will calculate the uh, component values. We're going to do an experiment in order to show that the uh, frequency response of this transconduct amplifier. So I'm going to discuss how we're going to measure it. So if I have got a compensator, I know this is a voltage one, but if this were a transconductor amplifier, all that would happen is this would go out. This is a symbol for transconductor amplifier. And Z would be the impedances of your feedback components. Yeah. It will be feedback for a transconductance amplifier, but uh, it's the components of the compensator. And then you would inject with the body 100 over here, which I have arranged on our board. And then you would put channel 1 over there and channel 2 over here. The signal would go here, but you'd be measuring the, 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 the phase and gain difference from this point to that point, which is, of course, only the compensator. And therefore, we would end up looking at the, trans, uh, the uh, um, frequency response of the compensator. We know from the previous slide that we have got a zero at the top. Uh, we have got a high frequency pole and we have got a pole at origin, omega P zero, right? Now the pole at origin, if I were to plot it on the frequency axis, would give me high gain at low frequencies and then I would get a zero, so it would go flat, and then I get a high frequency pole, and therefore it would go down. This is my gain. So I would like to measure now this in a real system, and I would like to see a shape like so. After that, we will put that into WDS and we superimpose it over a SEPIC converter. And the reason we have selected this particular SEPIC converter is because the controller IC that is on board of this SEPIC converter is in fact a transconductance amplifier. And then we compare the simulation results of a transconductance amplifier in WDS with the measured results from the body 100. So this is our uh, test setup, but uh, before I start, one thing that I forgot to mention, uh, we only talked about the Type 2 compensator. You very, very rarely, if ever, will see a Type 3 compensator with a transconductor amplifier, and that's why we don't really talk about it. Uh, now here, I have got a SEPIC converter. Uh, and uh, the reason we have selected this is because one, shortly we're going to do a video about how you design a SEPIC converter, but two, the particular chip that is being used on this is a transconductance app. And WDS has designed everything for us. I have got a SEPIC converter here with an input voltage of 12 volts, output voltage of 7.5 volts, and output current of 1 amps. And I am displaying here the transfer, uh, the uh, impedance, um, frequency response of the uh, compensator, which as I said, it's a type 2 compensator. You can see that there is a polar origin, and then you can see that it flattens out, that is my zero, and then you can see that it, it starts rolling off again, which is uh, our uh, second pole. So I have set up the body 100 with the BWIT, I have connected it exactly as I showed on the, uh, on the picture, and I am now measuring with the Bode 100 and you can see that my transconductant amp with the component values that we soldered, uh, in my case, uh, let us go back to WDS on the controller design, you have here the uh, transconductance amp um, selected, 
is a type 2. Note that if I go to type 3, it will actually disable the transconducting amp because we don't see actually a need of a type 3 with a transconducting amp. So on a type 2 compensator, the transconducting factor GM is specified in the data sheet, but please note sometimes it's vastly different to what is actually in the real world. So what you may have to do is adjust it after your measurement in order to work out what real GM is because it changes depending on the conditions that the data sheet was used, uh, was, uh, they used in the data sheet when they measured GM. Okay, so uh, you can see that I have uh, got my frequency response and now on my body 100, please try to bear this into memory, pole at origin, flattens out zero, another pole, and now let's look at the body 100, and you see that is exactly the same. Polar origin, this is the real measurement of my transconductor amp with those uh, poles and zeros. Flattens out, and then it goes back down again. So you can clearly see that, that I have got the polar origin, my zero, and the extra pole. If I go back to WDS, you can see that the poles and zeros are placed automatically by WDS. We will talk about this in a different video. And the component values that are soldered on the board based on those are shown over here. All I have to do is import my Bode 100, which I've got a function in WDS to do so, and after I have imported it, I can display these two together, and you can see now the red line is the simulation from WDS, and the black line is a transconductance amp with these components configured as a type 2 with these components and you can see that I've got an almost perfect match between the simulation and the real measurement and of course if I had a voltage amplifier and I'd calculated the uh, components appropriately I would get exactly the same thing. So this is how we design a transconductance amplifier. Uh, we will discuss this in future workshops and uh, hope you enjoyed the video and, uh, and I f***ed up the last bit. And thanks again for watching.